Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining in today. We have a very exciting and insightful out of the box India edition uh, webinar happening here. And um, I am Neha, I lead uh, customer success teams in Apps Flyer, and I'll be your host and moderator for today. And I'm joined by Manu, who is the director of demand at Ironsource Aura. We also have a great set of panelists joining us here. Uh, we have Mani from uh, Trell, we have Madhurima from ShareChat, and uh, Abhay uh, joining us from Metro. Um, this is um, today afternoon. Uh, we are going to go over, uh, start off with some state of app marketing insights from Apps Flyer. This will be followed by how to diversify your UA strategy by Manu. And then we'll be jumping into an intimate fireside chat uh, with all of our panelists. Uh, we will follow that up with Q&A. So we want this session to be as interactive as po possible. So do use the Q&A uh, button in your Zoom uh, to ask us questions throughout the webinar, yeah? Uh, just a quick few lines introducing myself. Uh, I'm Neha, uh, leading uh, the customer success teams at Apps Flyer, uh, have had extensive experience in ad tech and um, uh, in India and abroad and uh, love our thriving ecosystem over here, definitely my favorite. Uh, today, I would like to share with you some key insights that we have derived uh, looking at all the app ecosystem from last year. So last year has definitely been very, very interesting. Uh, lots and ups and downs and new challenges that we have never seen before. And for that, I would like to share some really great insights. Uh, the methodology that we have used to put together these insights uh, are as follows. AppsFlyer being an attribution authority, uh, we are 100% independent and unbiased, right? So uh, because of that, we are able to put together uh, some great numbers on what the app ecosystem in India looks like. And we have put together over 4.5K apps looking at 933 billion app opens and over 7.3 app installs uh, for these insights. So let's jump right in. Uh, we will begin with geographical insights. So India being such an interesting market, we see that apps from all around the world want to be present over here. However, Indian apps have kept our pole position and our dominant position within this market, which is great to hear, even considering last year's scenario. When we look specifically at app installs within India, there are definitely Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra states with larger populations leading, but we see some really good states like Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal coming in quite, quite close right behind. And when we look at these numbers at a city specific, um, what we see is that metros definitely are faring very, very strong with Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Pune at the forefront. However, the lead that they have maintained con compared to the previous years is closing in very much closely uh, by the tier two and the tier three cities. And so let's look at those now. What we see is that the tier two and tier three cities are really, really coming close in terms of the volume of app installs. And what we also saw last year that there were quite a few uh, apps that were launched across verticals in India that were specifically targeting tier two and tier three cities, right? So huge, huge, um, uh, you know, a chunk of tier two and tier three cities that are coming right up to the forefront. Next, I would like to share some user acquisition insights. Over here, we see that across the board, uh, definitely pandemic has hit um, uh, everybody, but we do see everybody recovering very strongly as well. Uh, entertainment, fintech verticals, and uh, gaming did show a very, very strong prominence during this time. And though we have been, you know, sort of had a suspicion around this, you do have the data also to prove that that is what it looked like. Um, retention rates, I would say, once you have spent a lot of time, effort, and resources in acquiring users, uh, retaining them becomes crucial. And there, unfortunately, we don't have great news. Overall retention rates have seen a drop of 12% uh, compared to the last year and day over day retention rates are dropping further. So definitely something all app marketers need to keep in mind uh, is how to improve those retention rates. And on the same lines, uh, 
a few months back, we had released another report specifically on uninstalls. And we see that every one out of two apps in India gets uninstalled, right? So close to a 50% uninstalled rate. And another big challenge considering the thriving market, app density that's present, and um, high uninstall rates on day one are indicative of the kind of onboarding experience uh, users have on your platform. Yeah? But lots and lots of good, good news. Uh, the in-app purchases when we see uh, over the last year um, did definitely post all the lockdowns were opened up, which coincided very much with our festive season, saw a really huge uptick across all verticals, which is a very, very positive note uh, to, uh, uh, to look at from a UA perspective. Next, we'll quickly look at retargeting strategies. For the past couple of years, we have seen remarketing is at the forefront on everybody's minds when we are thinking of app growth. But unless you're able to look at the incremental lift or measure it, you are not spending your ad spend as wisely. So we need to definitely look at how you can measure that lift to optimize your retargeting spends. And a quick look at mobile ad fraud. As the ad spends went down, we definitely saw the fraud uh, numbers dipping down as well. I would say another reason is with better fraud blocking mechanisms coming out uh, in the industry, that is also causing an overall dip in the kind of fraud uh, or fraudulent traffic that we see in India as a whole. And um, being proactive about uh, tackling fraud will definitely help everybody in the future. So looking ahead into 2021, a few quick tips uh, to improve app retention and uninstall rates. We need to focus on the onboarding experience of users. Measuring remarketing lift can really help focusing on regional and vernacular content, uh, building uh, and focusing on brand uh, campaigns along with your performance is going to add that additional uh, spark to your growth. And being proactive about mobile fraud is extremely crucial. And of course, uh, an all time favorite is maintaining a healthy mix of acquisition channels is absolutely key. Um, and at this point, uh, on that note, I would like to hand it over uh, to Manu to share with us how to diversify uh, your user acquisition strategy for growth. Thank you, Neha. Uh, that was very interesting. Uh, let me just go ahead and share my screen. Great. Um, Thanks, Nega. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Manu Pillay, and today I'll be talking about the best ways uh, that's available today uh, for you to, as advertisers to diversify your UA and growth strategies. And I hope and I sincerely hope that in this session, you'll probably walk away uh, with one or two new things. I've kept the slides very crisp so that we keep this very short and very to the point. Uh, let me very quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Maru. I am today uh, leading the sales uh, for Aura across all of India for Iron Source. Uh, I've been in this. Uh, I've been in this industry for the last, close to the last decade, and I've done several roles. I've done uh, roles in across operations, sales, etc. Now, uh, and and I'll also take a, a ten seconds to introduce Iron Source. I'm pretty sure there's no need for us to introduce Iron Source. I'm pretty sure it's famous enough. Uh, we we are one of the biggest companies uh, after Google and Facebook. We're a global company. We are based in Tel Aviv. Uh, we've got offices all across the world. Um, we also have an office here in India and in Bangalore. We have a small office where we focus on all of our clients. Um, with that, let's jump into the uh, session. So before we jump into how to diversify and what to do, I want to take a second and talk about the traditional channels that are there in the market today. It's very important for us to review what we have so that it would make sense to talk about what we would like to recommend for the future, right? So today, like we know, India is one of the largest growing markets. 1.3 billion people, 500 million internet users. It's expanding at a, at a speed, uh, which is phenomenal, right? So out of this, there was a recent Bloomberg report where that stated that out of this, specifically in the mobile digital ecosystem, all of the advertising spends, approximately 70% of that is currently going to Google and Facebook. 
about 20% of, of, of the remaining goes into our affiliate networks, which I'm pretty sure everybody's aware about. And then the last five to 10% is what goes into pure SDK networks like IronSource, Bungle, et cetera. Now, why is this important? I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about some pros and cons of all of these channels, but specifically over here, I want to talk about working with that 20% that we are currently, uh, uh, as advertisers, you are working with uh, affiliates today, right? So there are pros. I mean, I'm pretty sure at some point, all of us uh, as advertisers have have had that uh, had that target, had had that requirement to sort of reach that one million in two or three days, and and I'm pretty sure at the end of it. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point, all of you have said, thank God for affiliates, right? Like they can give you scale overnight. And, and the beauty is they can actually, you know, they work on, on, on down the funnel metrics, like on, on down the funnel events that would, as advertisers, make a lot of sense to you. It might be a revenue event, it might be a registration event, but that would be that core event that drives your business, right? These are some of the advantages that, that, that affiliates bring to the table. But with every coin, there's also the other side. There's, let's call it the dark side, right? Uh, and and it's, it's, a, it's a very common, it's common knowledge. Like you do experience some bit of fraud levels when you work with affiliates. Um, uh, to give you a sense of the, the, the average fraud level in India, specifically for mobile performance in this uh, channel, uh, in this sector is about 30, 32%. And the global average, is about 16%. Now, uh, I, I don't need to talk about that. We have AppsFlyer on the team. So uh, they are the guys who are constantly out there finding out new ways to catch and, and control this. But fraud is still a huge problem. Um, another problem is zero visibility. You you barely have visibility as advertisers into which, which sources your, your campaigns are running. Because today, as you know, the method is uh, an affiliate network takes it and then rebrokers it to two other of its partners who in turn rebroker it, who in turn rebroker it, and and then the channel and the cycle is so long that you have no visibility, and that in, that in fact has a severe impact on your brand safety as well as to you know what kind of properties are you actually running in, what are the controls and checks, and there's so much effort as advertisers that you have to put in place today from your end in addition to partnering with uh, you know uh, third parties uh, and and these agents that help you control this it's 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 difficult right so how do we is there a way the the big question that exists today is is there a way or is there a channel out there uh, that we can you know move to and look at where you bring in all of the good things or all the pros of that affiliates bring to the table, but also sort of move away from the negatives that are the challenges that we are facing today. And my answer to that is, as usual, always, yes, there is another way. Diversify, diversify your, your spends. And, the, and, and where do you diversify into? The OEM channel. And this is actually one of the new, uh, one of the newest, more evolved channels that's out there in the market today for all advertisers. And, and, and for some reason, um, you know, today, because of the noise that's out there in the market, and this is one of the channels that's overlooked very easily. But as it turns out, OEM channels can actually bring you the scale that you want. And because these OEM channels are, when I say OEM, what do I mean by OEM? I mean phone manufacturers, original equipment manufacturers. You're, you're, when I say that, you should think about Samsung, you should think about Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo, and there's so many handset ma manufacturers out there, right? And the beauty is all of your, as advertisers, all of your apps are already developed in, in a way that it supports uh, and it's supported and, and it fits within this OEM ecosystem, within the handset ecosystem. The user experience is designed already in such a way, right? Now, because of this, you have brand safety. There's hardly any fraud because when you use OEM to get scale, every device, every user is, is a real person like you and me behind a phone, right? Um, cost is another advantage. You can always walk in and, and and get uh, deals, huge deals at very, very cost effective rates. And of course, there's brand safety that I don't even need to talk about because when you are uh, working with OEMs, you're working with OEMs like Samsung, Xiaomi, and for them, brand safety is like the top most thing, uh, uh, priority for them. So 
uh, but you know, typically when today when I when I talk about OEMs, I do I do see some glances. Like, really, is that is that is that the right way? I mean, absolutely. I mean, I I understand the 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 mindset, right? Like typically when I say OEMs, you're thinking uh, the, your apps preloaded. Uh, you know, there's a much longer sales cycle wherein after your app is preloaded, the phone is manufactured, sold, someone buys it. Um, you know, the app version might be a little outdated. Uh, you have no control whether your phone is being bought in 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 Mumbai or in a tier three village uh, by a, an older gentleman who's not even a part of your target bracket, right? There's no way to control that. But that's the beauty of it. This particular channel in the last couple of years has evolved so much that there are several networks out there today, and there are several other companies out there today who tied up with these OEMs and let these OEMs do what they do best. They make great handsets, right? And there are these networks who actually tied up and who's built and devised and, and sort of constructed this technology around these OEMs that help you as an advertiser access it easily. And it'll help you acquire users in three key things. One is you can send out personalized ads. And this is very important, and I'll talk about this in, a, in, a, in the upcoming slides. Uh, scale, as we talked about earlier. And I think the most important thing is performance. The down the funnel, the, the event, the revenue event that actually drives your business today is something that OEMs as a channel can actually give you. Now, let me uh, take you to uh, give you a fun fact. 95% of the users, 95%, you, me, everybody in the audience, right? 95% uh, uh, of us actually download 40% of our apps in our phone for the life cycle. I'm talking about our phone's life cycle, right? Uh, in the first 48 hours of buying a new phone. Now, this piece, this piece of information is actually very key. Why is this key? Let's actually look at this entire uh, proposition in a, in, a, in a real, let's imagine the real flow, right? So in India today, people actually buy phones directly from retailers or they go online and buy a good Flipkart, Amazon, right? You, you buy that phone. So let's imagine two different individuals, two extremely different individuals, right? Let's imagine a, a, a lady uh, maybe in Mumbai who's, who's indulged herself in a Samsung A11. And let's also take another case, which is an older gentleman. Let's say, let's uh, say he's in Delhi uh, and, and he's indulged, you know, he's just retired. He wants a nice phone. He has a lot of time in his hands. So both of these individuals can actually drive value for your, ad, uh, for your app or not. But either way, both of these individuals are extremely important to user growth, as in how do you acquire these two users today in in, in this OEM channel, there are targeting capabilities and technologies built in that will help you acquire each of these individual users at specific points, especially after they they bought their phone. This is the beauty of OEM. So you can have a, you can have solutions. For example, you can have a app recommendation screen while uh, 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 the lady is setting up a phone where she sees some something interesting and she's like, oh, okay, this is something. Let me check that out. Right? That's the important mentality. I mean, ask yourself how many of you have bought new phones and then immediately gone to the app store and downloaded so many apps and go, okay, I'm going to check this. I'm going to check that out. And then over a period of time, you'll cut that down and saying that okay, you know what? These are the set of apps now I actually typically use. And it's the same case. For the for the older gentleman, right, right. So this is the beauty. This is the sort of evolution that I want to bring across to you guys today, as advertisers, please to consider. And this would be like my one recommendation is to consider OEM as the next frontier for you to acquire users. And with that, I, I'd like to wrap up and pass it back to Neha. Neha, over to you. Thank you so much, Manu. Uh, that was uh, that was extremely helpful and uh, really appreciate uh, you sharing uh, all these insights with us. And uh, now we are gonna move on to the exciting bit of the uh, webinar, which is a really uh, intimate fireside chat uh, with our growth experts on uh, the topic of today being how to acquire, retain and engage users, specifically in the short video format uh, space, right? So let me uh, take a quick minute 
to uh, introduce our panelists in detail. Uh, we have today with us Madhurima uh, from ShareChat. Uh, ShareChat as a company with their Moj app and ShareChat app have seen tremendous growth, very exponential growth in the past many, many months. And Madhurima herself um, having a great experience in uh, uh, and focusing on user acquisition leads their efforts over here. So welcome Madhurima. Um, Thanks. Next, we have uh, Abhay joining us from Mitro, uh, leading uh, the digital strategy uh, from uh, partnerships, user acquisition, and in-app engagement channels. Uh, being a seasoned uh, professional focuses a lot on how product and marketing uh, work with each other. So uh, welcome, Abhay. Uh, thank you for taking the time. And, thank uh, you, Leah. We, we also have with us Mani uh, from uh, Trell. Mani is the VP of Growth. And uh, Trell, which is a lifestyle social commerce platform in India uh, with over 100 million users, um, focuses uh, definitely on you know, how to grow several startups uh, across many verticals and um, has worked with uh, uh, very various uh, of these acclaimed clients over time, helping them grow. So, um, th uh, welcome, uh, uh, Mani. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, a really terrific panel that we have here, and uh, I think I'll get started uh, first uh, with Abhay. And um, Abhay, uh, we just saw uh, some really good stats uh, from Apps Fly numbers and from Manu about user acquisition. And uh, I would love to uh, hear from you on uh, how uh, do you leverage uh, your paid acquisition channels for further growth. Okay, uh, so first of all, thank you, uh, Neha, for, for having me here. Thank you, Eigensource and uh, AppsFlyer. Um, I'll, I'll start answering the question uh, by saying that, um, um, you know, paid acquisitions are, um, uh, you know, paid acquisitions are an important uh, part of your overall growth strategy. Um, but we, as an as an app, we actually started by having a huge number of organic installs. You know, if if you if you remember uh, the months of so we, we as an app launched uh, somewhere around April eleventh of the last year, and in the next three to four months, um, uh, the kind of numbers that we saw uh, for uh, you know in our acquisition uh, side were huge. Right, uh, so we we were trying to figure out um, how do we marry uh, product and the um, marketing side of things, you know, because um, if you are just acquiring new users without retaining them, then it kind of does not make sense to your head, right? So you would want, you know, if if somebody is coming to your application and if he's opening and trying to use your app he or she would find it interesting enough to you know stay on the platform and stick to the uh, app so that was kind of the objective that we had in our heads um of course we experimented we are still experimenting we are still tinkering uh, around the uh, paid channels and then slowly we started our paid uh, acquisition channels uh with the paid acquisition channels um, so how you ask, right? Uh, how do, how are we uh, guys at Metro leveraging the paid acquisition channels? Uh, one thing is to be very clear about the objective, right? Uh, so uh, one of the objectives that we drive is, of course, um, bringing in new users. But the second is, of course, uh, you know, supporting the product uh, and the tech side of the uh, platform uh, to help them devise new hypotheses and test it. Right. So it depends on what kind of objective that you are trying to achieve. Uh, for example, uh, as Manu mentioned uh, uh, just now, OEMs are a great way to achieve scale. But um, when I'm trying to test a particular uh, new, you know, a new feature, then I would look at some other uh, channels. You know, Facebook um, is a good challenge to acquire, some, uh, you know, a, a very targeted kind of audience. But on the longer run, Facebook might become very expensive. Uh, we have seen uh, very good growth uh, on Google UAC campaigns. I think the retention numbers of D3, D7 are 2x than the um, uh, other channels. Um, and of course, when we started uh, scaling up, uh, we opened our OEM channels, we opened up our uh, uh, affiliates with affiliates, of course, uh, 
uh, you know, fraud. Uh, some of the affiliates are very notorious uh, on uh, on the fraud numbers that they develop. Some of them, you know, uh, some of the affiliate channels have around forty percent uh, uh, fraud in stocks. But um, uh, then you need to have a partner uh, who would help you identify these fraud in stocks. Bangle three hundred and sixty, for example, is the partner that we have uh, with us. So um, you know. Having a diverse portfolio of acquisition channels, uh, having clear objectives in your head, why are you using one particular channel uh, to scale, and then how are how are you kind of retaining the audience? You know what what kind of events that you are optimizing on. Um, I think these are the um, uh, you know some of the things that we uh, take care of while uh, leveraging paid channels at Metro. Amazing. That was uh, that was terrific, Abhay, and uh, love the point about uh, the objective of uh, uh, supporting your product and tech teams in their hypotheses. Uh, that was uh, that was very insightful. And uh, picking up from your retention point, I would like to uh, ask uh, money. Uh, that uh, money we saw that uh, even in the app retention stats that we saw, saw earlier that definitely user retention is a challenge right um, and would love to hear from you on how you tackle the issue of user retention in india so uh, yeah thank you first of all thank you guys thanks for inviting me so in terms of user retention let's say trail as a platform as you guys know we are more into lifestyle content platform right so we have a lot of categories of content that's basically very uh, user focused in terms of lifestyle content and we are very very uh, uh, huge in terms of our tier 2 tier 3 audience who are very focused on their uh, vernacular language audience right so uh, when we come, when we did the research and when when we started creating a persona of users who basically would require very focused lifestyle content based on the demographics and geographical level data that's when we found what kind of content the people people would require and that's when we started giving those kind of content pieces to the relevant user to make sure that the, that it adds some value to their lifetime at any point of time right so we started creating the content and uh, users stick to our platform for watching the content and and to make sure that they are using the content for their benefit so that's how we we started working on our our retention numbers i think we might have uh, lost money over there a bit but we'll definitely uh, you know jump back to uh, talking to him and uh, what i would uh, actually money was making a really good point about content uh, from a user retention perspective and uh, on those lines uh, madhurima i would uh, love to hear you know the tremendous growth that you all have seen on share chat and moj apps uh, you uh, how do you all incentivize your content creators uh, and onboard them to the uh, platform if you could talk a little bit about your strategies around uh, keeping content creators uh, you know sort of uh, attract uh, attracted to your platform all right so thank you neha thanks for the question thanks for inviting me team here so uh, neha circling back to your question yeah. when you talk about uh, incentivizing users to come and retain on my platform that share chat and watch in our platform so i believe this actually is a goal that penetrates throughout the company in different facets to different streams the only one thing that we at share chat and now moj is doing are trying to do is not create a silo between any of our teams be it branding be it performance be it influencer marketing it's like the whole teams of all the marketing pieces covering the front and the back end of marketing above the line below the line marketing everyone everyone is segregated and concentrated on the goal that they're looking forward to achieve so to sum it all up that yes we do not believe in a silo kind of marketing model and i believe that has helped us a lot i believe all my peers over here would also abide by the same because that i believe is a goal for all the companies out there so that's one thing and the other thing is uh, now with moj we have established i believe share chat as one of the leading social media platforms in india and uh, for moj as well we want to create it as a hot shot video destination i believe we are getting somewhere and i'm really impressed by the group personally so when we talk about incentivizing creators on that platform one thing that all the teams are trying to achieve together is that uh, their reach is actually doubled up through both these apps put together kind of a unison model in reaching to the final goal then we have different teams using different strategies to help them understand and reach their audience set right through uh, through some getaways through some hampers keeping them happy basically because for us creator is the king creator is the god right for all for all of us here together in the social media platforms 
So yeah, whatever makes them happy, whatever helps them in reaching their audience, that is what we do. We are here to serve them. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I I think uh, you hit the nail on the head. and uh, that is so uh, so true love the point that you made madhurima about not working in silos and how important it is to break those barriers and have a uniform strategy across uh, your departments and um, uh, that you know is going to help you sort of differentiate and um, uh, on that point uh, money i wanted to come back to you and uh, talk to you a bit about differentiation that uh, with the uh, the ban that we saw um, on tiktok uh, a lot of advertisers exited from the short uh, format uh, video space right and in such a situation what is your strategy to woo these bands uh, brands back to your platform yeah, that's a nice question yeah so uh, see as i told you guys right so we are not into a short video content platform we are a we are a lifestyle content platform and it's a pro- focus from day one that we wanted to build a community of lifestyle audience where pe- people can come on to our platform and express the views and thoughts in their expert domain which are they feel like that they are good at and that helps the other community to lane and and to evolve themselves into a different different person altogether that's the whole objective of of uh, a community as a piece that we have uh, from day one that's a prime focus and we have kept on building a community very strong and we have a very great community right now of lifestyle users right so coming back to your question how exactly uh the tiktok ban has helped us definitely tiktok ban has given us an immense boost in terms of organic installs and we have also seen a lot of people uh, who reached out to us to to a lot of creators who would require some help in, in terms of uh, getting their content onto the platform and at the same time getting their kind of content that should be available so we have utilized the the wave definitely really well and we have strategized our, our marketing plans accordingly in terms of how we can acquire a lot many users we have seen an immense growth and we have actually uh, for the we have we have uh, how to explain it for the next one year what our targets we have i think we have completed in the next two months in the in the last two months and we have excelled it really really well and we have done it really great actually that's and that's- and our focus towards our social commerce as a thing also also got boosted because of that because we have seen a lot of community audience that are available on our platform and we we started our social commerce at the same time and we are seeing a seeing really great immense results over there too tremendous uh, that that is terrific money to hear and yep. uh, the the different kind of approach that you've taken of community uh, towards yep. uh, content is uh, terrific loving that whatever you all are trying out uh, yep. this huge app ecosystem of india is working out and uh, you all are thriving uh, thank you uh, for sharing that and uh, on that point uh, madhurima i wanted to come back to you and um, uh check with you because we were talking about content and uh like money also mentioned there is differentiation through the community uh how yeah. do you tackle uh, at share chat specifically madhurima how do you tackle the challenge of moderation right because your your apps are bursting with you know all these users in a very short period of time and uh, definitely a challenge so how do you look at it as a company so uh, content moderation actually has been as uh, money rightly pointed out community is something that uh, is the core value of both of our apps beat uh, share chat and beat moj so uh, keeping our brand image and keeping our community healthy in terms of the content that is being uh, received and that is being read out by all of our uh, users is very important actually so uh, to help our user community and to help us also keep a brand image that is brand image sanctity of our app what is more important for us and what we have done in the past year is first we have used a lot of strategies to give an over point view of it we have partnered with a uh, third party agency tools to help us understand and keep a quick look a first layer look of what is the kind of uh, content that's being published on our platform because the amount is pretty huge right it was 750 million last year so it's pretty huge so uh, the third party tools help us a lot the second thing is our internal teams in house have also developed tools to keep a secondary check or a preliminary check as well the last part of the preliminary check as well on the type of content that's being posted be it, be it on the social front be it on the political front be it on the legal implications of the content and uh, the main idea behind the content so these kind of things these kind of uh, tools uh, help us in maintaining the basic sanctity of the app apart from this obviously we have teams in house as well to help us 
bridge all the gaps that if in case something seeps through the system, then all of our teams are on it. So review platforms, third party tool platforms, internal tools surely have helped us a lot in maintaining the content sanctity of the app. That's that's amazing, Madhurima. And I think uh, with everything you say, I see the that same common theme that with your uh, with share chat of you know breaking down barriers and uh, not working in silos, having uh, you know like a seamless strategy across uh, across the board, uh, which is great. And um, I I would like to uh, you know uh, come back to Abhay and uh, have a more uh, uh, talk to you about a more general question now about how has uh, 2020, uh, everything that happened, very unique to our generation. How has this impacted uh, your strategy, and what would be the key learnings that you will take from it as you, uh, you know, uh, work towards 2021 goals? So, um, for Mitro specifically, uh, Neha, we we started as as an application after the lockdown was already in place, right? Yes. So for us, the challenges, we do not have a reference to compare ourselves from the pre-lockdown, pre-COVID era. Mm -hmm. But um, of course, um, uh, due to the limited, uh, you know, movement of people uh, during the lockdown, um, social media engagement across the industry went up, you know, and specifically um, in the in the short video space, we saw a lot of uh, new uh, applications coming up, right? Um, and we as a platform, we, we started, uh, you know, much before the uh, market uh, leader, when the Chinese app ban came around, uh, the market leader was still there. Uh, we were in fact at a comfortable 10 million downloads um, when this uh, Chinese app ban came around. So in our heads, we uh, always had, um, you know, in our heads, there was never a day when the market leader will not be there. So we always knew that we need to differentiate ourselves and position ourselves uh, differently. Then of course, the certain geopolitical uh, Question that was there, uh, you know, uh, clubbed with the Atman movement of our honorable prime minister that was there. Um, so 2020 has been, uh, you know, not just for Mitrun, but uh, for you know, all the applications, applications across the category. It has been a great, exciting year. Um, there were a lot of learnings. Um, I think. Um, what we will carry forward to the next year, this this year, 2021, is, um, it, you know, right now there are too many options for a user to look at. I think every every uh, application would be uh, looking at uh, uh, differentiating themselves uh, in terms of uh, technology or in terms of content uh, or you know, uh, in terms of uh, how do they approach um, acquisition or retention. So I and and I think that is that that is true for Mitro uh, Mitro also. Appreciate so, that, yeah. Abhay and uh, y'all. Uh, I think Mitro TV has such a unique position. Like you mentioned, y'all were already uh, y'all had the foresight of coming in. You know when you already had the, the competition in place, so you had to already think about how to survive and thrive in such a closely competed uh, environment. And frankly speaking, you're getting that again now within the India app, app ecosystem. So uh, that's uh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, money, I would like to ask you next. Uh, you know, uh, learnings from 2020 uh, that will impact your this year's strategy. Uh, learnings from 2020 that will impact our this year's strategy. So we are very focused on our our uh, social commerce as a piece going forward. So we have already started it probably three months ago, and we are seeing really, really good scale in terms of numbers. We are doing around 10,000 orders per day right now. Uh, so uh, for 2020, our plans was to make sure that that uh, we we go uh, fully full throttle on our our social commerce as a strategy, and make sure that we establish ourselves uh, in a unique position as a social commerce platform, which. Uh, which we are working on right now and and that is going to be our strategy for 2020 and for user acquisitions which which most of you guys will be interested in knowing so <laughs> in terms of user acquisition uh, our focus will be more towards our lifestyle audience for sure what we are trying to uh, uh, trying to make sure that we we bring more focused audience uh, who, who who would definitely be uh, 
sticking to our platform and making sure that uh, they get relevant content on our platform to make sure that they participate in the community and uh, which can help them help them to to engage to the platform really well and uh, more focused towards our our creator platform so we have really huge number of creators on the platform who comes on the platform to create a lot of ugg content so to solve some of the interesting problems for the creators to help them in terms of what decisions that they can make to create some content along with that to help them in terms of making some some good decisions in terms of what kind of content to be created and uh, and also uh, to to make sure that our commerce is going going really well that's the focus for 2020 for us that's that's terrific and considering you yourself bring in so much experience from the e-commerce and you know our growth space uh, yeah. definitely you're going to add uh, you know a great growth for trail as well in the social commerce thank you space. thank you uh, yeah Madhurima, definitely would love to hear from you uh, how uh, your learnings from 2020, uh, a huge uh, lot of learnings that you did really well at as well, uh, tremendous growth. How are they going to impact your 2021 strategy, which is a little, this year is going to be quite different from last year. Yeah, so uh, the first half and the second half of 2020 were actually polar opposites. <laughs> so... <laughs> in first half we were full throttle with uh, share chat and trying to uh, you know leverage it into some huge numbers and trying to get some uh, good growth for the app and then covid hit us and uh, tiktok planned to exit from the market obviously so post that post march launch actually we have learned a lot social uh, so the thing with us was our learnings from 2020 was our user acquisition strategy was actually a lot very very similar as manu rightly pointed out oems being is one of the very good sources that we still now consider as uh, one of our prime sources of acquisition post our srns are uh, google and facebook obviously but uh, coming into uh, 2021 and uh, 2020 was leveraged most on user acquisition for more specifically entertaining the users for share chat as 21 2021 is starting we are trying hard to leverage the user community of uh, share chat and transferring them into the creator community for sure because i'm sure that they are enjoying the content pieces but we want them to buck up and have a good uh, create good content for the platform as well because i believe everyone is a creator at heart and uh, we want them to you know give them some courage to show their uh, talent on the platform be it share chat or more So uh, right now at this point of time the main strategy is obviously to convert the user community to creator community or let's say to create a healthy mix between both the community and create a good amalgamation of the uh, people that we have on both the apps and uh, then obviously leverage more to new heights we have just launched lenses and we are trying our best to get the users to use the new new features that we are trying to launch so basically for share chat it's user to creator and for more for getting new users and keep them retained on the platform through our new features so yeah that's the thing wow you you have quite a lot on your plate i must say and uh, <laughs> thank you for helping everybody bring out their hidden uh, creative uh, you know uh, outside uh, that is definitely happening a lot of amazing so uh, at this point uh, we we have quite a few questions that have come up uh, from the audience as well and uh, i would like to uh, put forth uh, some of those uh, for for the panelists over here uh, the first one is uh, uh, not to anyone in particular but can you share uh, your social media strategy for user acquisition so um, being being social yourselves <laughs> uh do you all like to delve into uh, social media strategies uh, for user acquisition and uh, what would that be i think you you need one more session to answer the question to explain <laughs> a complete social media strategy completely <laughs> but two quick lines money social media strategy so our primary focus is is basically for celebrating our creators so we have great con lifestyle content that's coming and it's very hyper hyper local targeted where it's focused towards our our tier 2 tier 3 audience where they don't get co content in their own language uh, and very specific content which is let's say now for example if you are looking for say uh, now let's say if you are uh, targeting it for west bengal you know that there are there are very hyper local content pieces that west bengal people will not get it anywhere else okay so finding creators from those places and making them uh, create lot of content which can engage with those kind of audience that that hyper local targeting uh, 
strategy really worked really good for us and uh, we are we are confident that it should really help help other companies too if at all if they are into the same that's great uh, great abhay madhurama any two cents here no i think i, I agree with mani that uh, you, you know it's 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 a, it's a whole different conversation uh, for social media um, Uh, strategy but uh, for for us Mit, uh, at metro um, we use mostly we use the social media uh, platforms usually to interact with the the, the users uh, you know so uh, we in fact have created a lot of uh, so we have created quite of uh, quite a few micro communities within the platform and uh, and these are interest based communities right so so for each of these interest based communities we, we communities we uh, we use uh, you know the existing social media platforms you know be it twitter youtube or instagram or any other uh, channel to interact and you know understand these users and and it, it's 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 quite a two way two way thing you you want to learn about these users not just uh, you know not just for the sake of um, uh, interacting with them but because you also need to kind of predict what the user wants today and what he or she would want three months from now right and that is the kind of learning that goes into marketing strategy and the product strategy as well so yeah that is our primary objective with the social media terrific uh, i'll i'll move on to the next question one uh, one of the questions being asked is between mobile web and mobile app and uh, uh, we can we can also frame that in a way that where does seo and web stand in your set of priorities you know so how do you view mobile web and mobile app your focus is completely on app and uh, do you see SEO and web. Where does this stand in your priorities? Yeah, Madhurima, would you like to take that one? Uh, so nothing in particular exactly. So uh, back in the day, uh, prior to two to three years back, actually uh, SEO and uh, mobile web is actually very important to leverage in the initial days when you are just trying to uh, let the world know about your. Uh, app about your product so those were very important for uh, share chat per se till up um, till a certain amount of time when we gained a good traction in the industry so uh, at that point of time we did leverage a lot and we still do leverage a lot because it always because google's algorithm keeps on changing every single time they get an opportunity and we have to leverage being the social apps and being highly competitive in the fields it's uh, very important for us to leverage even a single speck of opportunity that we do have to gauge the audience views to gauge the audience inside attention right so that is primarily very important but at this point of time when you gain a certain traction in the industry when you have acquired a good set of users it is actually like a placeholder for you where you are present you're working upon it but there are other metrics also in place for line but yes it is indeed very important parallelly important is what i would say initial days much more important Yeah, I I saw both Mani and Abhay nod when you were talking about the change in the algorithms, and I'm sure uh, everybody relates to that. No, for for Trell, for Trell Mobile Web is is actually one of the primary uh, one of the good acquisition channels that I've seen. And actually, to be very frank, uh, I don't know how many of you guys agree with this or not. Actually, retention retention rates are pretty good when you use your mobile web to app app conversion strategies, and that's how we maintain our retentions. to be very frank uh, so mobile web is a platform where your acquisition uh, if if done correctly and if your if your targeting is really really hyper hyper focus and you are you are actually targeting the user at a hyper focus level hyper local level uh, your mobile web becomes your your one of the key acquisition channels and at the same time it also helps you for your for maintaining your retention really well because the user who basically comes to comes on a mobile web if you are able to convert the user to your app that really helps in your you maintaining your retention really well and for trail one of a one for being uh from day one we have focused on our mobile web really well because if you could see our platform it's exactly the same way how you view our app so the content uh, what goes into our mobile web uh, app comes onto the mobile web too so most of the, there is a there is a drop in the user uh, say an initial rate but definitely the user comes back to us uh, uh, when when he or she gets a content piece that's exciting 
and they definitely come back to the platform and we maintain our retention rates really well, uh, converting the user from mobile web to mobile app. That's one strategy we picked up much earlier to make sure our retentions are in line. Amazing. Uh, that's great. Thank you for that. And there is, uh, uh, how do you guys, uh, how are you guys working on reducing churn? So um, I know we saw a lot of stats about uninstalled stuff. Uh, and I know uh, Mani, you addressed this uh, for some part about user retention, but uh, specifically uh, reducing churn, how do you uh, address that? Is that uh, the churn, again, there are there are three different ways, right? So churn, let's say it's a, it's a very, very broad question according to me. Now uh, you have to go a little focus churn. Uh, it totally depends on your acquisition channel is one and the next product plays a key role. And then what is the focus targeting targeting audience that you're bringing into the piece, right? Now, let's say, for example, let anyway, this, this let, let's assume an OEM channel. Okay. Now, let's say if the user is coming from an OEM channel, if you're able to optimize the user based on whatever uh, a little amount of uh, user user attributes that are available for targeting uh, from an OEM channel, or let's say if you know the device uh, device model number, or if you if you know uh, whether demographic of the user, place of the user, and if the user once comes to the platform by uh, having the same content piece or much relevant content pieces that are available for them, and if they could engage with your with your content on 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 say once the install happens, uh, definitely your churn comes down. This is one of the learning that we got in 2020. What we tried doing is earlier it was a it was a common thing that we have as we are we, for all the acquisition channels, and then we started optimizing it for each and every acquisition channel to make sure that. Uh, every user based on their uh, their attributes that we basically target for or based on the user attributes that they're coming onto the platform we optimize personalization actually helped us to reduce the reduce our return rates really really well and uh, as i as i keep saying you localized targeting and uh, hyper local targeting uh, language uh, 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 is one of is one of the key key things that helped us to reduce the churn rates really well absolutely and uh, there's a question for Abhay that uh, since you were uh, you had mentioned that you know you focus a lot on how uh, marketing is able to paid marketing is able to support product and tech right and looking at uh, how heavily uh, your competition is uh, focusing on affiliates uh, do you also mm -hmm. have similar plans on you know focusing a lot on uh, paid uh, acquisitions to affiliates. See, as I mentioned previously, affiliates do play a, a, a huge role when you scale a certain kind of uh, feature, right? Um, we, we do have an affiliate uh, strategy in place, but not because uh, the competitors are doing it, right? Uh, it, it's, it's more geared towards, um, you know, uh, you have a micro feature that is getting launched on the application and uh, you would want to, uh, you know, get the right intent for the audience to come in and experience that particular micro feature, right? That is where, uh, that is how we define our acquisition channels, uh, right? Of course, when you are scaling it, when, when your objective is only to scale at, um, uh, you know, at, at a very, uh, high pace, then affiliates, for right now, our affiliate channels, you know, we maintain a very um, small percentage of um, uh, users getting acquired via these uh, affiliate channels. Uh, huge focus is on uh, your uh, Google UAC and some of the OEMs uh, that we're uh, partnered with. But uh, affiliates right now in the, uh, in the mix, it's, it's a very small share. Um, not sure if we, we will uh, change it in the near future. Sure, thank you for that, Abhay. And the next question is for Madhurima. Uh, this is um, about: uh, Are you working on diversifying the content on your app? So, would you like? Do you know? Do you make conscious effort to diversify it? And is there any focused efforts towards onboarding users who can be content creators? Yeah, for sure. Actually, for uh, uh, Moj. Uh, to be very exact, we are working heavily towards onboarding creators on different content genres because that's very important. Being, uh, I, we want all actually a plethora of content creators from a different segments, be it fitness, be it fashion, you may be a dancer, maybe a singer. If you could, if you want to come here and explore, then any kind of uh, genres that you follow up, it would be great to have you on board. 
for uh, merge and share chat as well for sure to make conscious efforts for diversifying content genres is what we do through our uh, paid user acquisition channels the creative strategies that we have if as i said if the whole company and if our current strategy lines up to diverse uh, the content genres that we have then we make sure we put the word out there through our paid acquisition sources through our creative strategies so that we let the word out that we are looking forward for people in uh, different content genres to come and try our app so that's a conscious effort and hidden efforts obviously we follow some uh, product mechanisms inside the applications to motivate the users to create content in certain genres so both conscious and non conscious efforts are obviously for sure that's great uh Thank you so much, Madhurima. And uh, something next uh, our crowd would love to uh, hear about is we spoke about uh, Google, Facebook, uh, affiliates, OEMs. How do you all view programmatic channels? Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I'll just take that question. Uh, sure. Just a go, the first try at it. So programmatic is actually a good source for you. It will convert well, for sure. But the thing is, as uh, Abhay and Mani correctly pointed out, there needs to be a mix of the acquisition sources that you are going to use to uh, get users on your platform. Because there's a certain kind of strategy that you need to follow to maintain the cost effectiveness of your uh, paid, paid marketing. And that is the reason why it all depends on what your budget strategy is. Programmatic, uh, be it programmatic, be it affiliate, be it OEM, you can make everyone convert well. It all depends on your budget strategy that you have, and you can obviously target your audience as well. But more than affiliates, obviously, programmatic would convert well. That's our experience in the past, along with the uh, OEMs and the SDK networks, for sure. Terrific. Um, guys, I know uh, we, have, we have hit the time limit. Uh, this was a really, really interesting conversation, which I too, just like you guys, would have loved to keep going on. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, it's 4 p.m. and uh, we have to close out this session. Uh, I think uh, the true theme encompassed by all of our panelists over here is uh, the saying that never let a good crisis go to waste. And we have seen the, um, the, the Indian app uh, ecosystem definitely taking great advantage of it uh, in this space, at least. I want to sincerely thank uh, Mani, Abhay, Madhurima for joining us, taking out the time, and to the entire audience uh, for uh, spending your afternoon with us. Uh, I hope you found it insightful. And uh, special thanks, uh, Manu, uh, for sharing those great, great insights and for collaborating with us on this. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It was a great question. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good day. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Bye.